Good, so good morning everybody. And uh, let's just get started then with our usual little bit of a, a bit of a clap. So I'm just gonna put onto the screen the um, clapping rhythm. We're gonna do the same one as last week. And um, so let me just get that going. Do wave like mad if you can't see it. Should be there now. And uh, okay, well it's just a, it's a four bar um, pattern. The, the left, right, left, right of course is your feet if you want to uh, walk or tap them at the same time. So all we're simply going to do is clap on beat one of the first bar, on beat two of the second bar, beat three of the third bar and beat four of the fourth bar and then loop that. So you'll go straight back to beat one of the f on the fifth bar. And uh, it's as simple as that. Um, well, I say it's simple. It's not actually that easy when you're stamping your feet at the same time. So I'll set my uh, egg timer to go. I'll get the metronome going at a, a walking pace. A walking pace for certain people. So uh, start walking your feet if you like. After four, we'll start clapping. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, 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 two, three. One, two, three, four. One. Uh, last time. Three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Oh, it's got me going. It's warmed up a bit. Um, right, so if I have to grab your instrument and we'll just do our usual little bit of uh, blowing some long tones into our, our instruments. Um, I don't know if any of the wind instruments or brass instrument players do that breathing thing to expand lung capacity. I mean, bass players can do this as well, if they like, but it uh, won't help the bass playing. Um, where you breathe in slowly for five seconds, hold your breath, and then breathe out for five seconds and empty your lungs completely and repeat. And it's something you can do at any, uh, you can do it at a bus stop, if you like, waiting for the bus. So something you can do whenever you've got a spare minute. Um, right, so we're going to be doing uh, some just long tones and exercising the fingers just for a minute. So here we go. Uh, we're on C major today, concert C major. So I'm going to just play the note C. Here we go. traditional chromatic scale next um, so we're going to be starting on 
concert C. So D for the B flat instruments and A for the E flat instruments. And uh, going from concert C up to the octave and straight back down again. At that speed, one note on each click. So aim for, um, perhaps do what he was saying, just blowing a, 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 a lowish volume tone, a quiet tone, um, aiming for um, a consistent tone throughout as well. So go for the quality of the note as much as getting the, the notes right. So let's obviously get, try and get the notes right, but here we go, after four, one, Two, one, two, three, four. Down. And we've reached the end there. Let's do that again. Two, three, four. Carry on, I'm just getting a phone call, I'm trying to stop. Right, you've probably reached the bottom there. I thought I'd turn my phone off. Here we go, let's do that again. Two, three, four. Good. Okay, let's just speed that up and uh, I'm going to jump a bit straight up to 120 beats per minute. That was 80, so we're going up 50%. Same scale though. One, two, one, two, three, four. Two more, so we're going to jump right up to 160. You can hear it speeding up. Are you ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's just do one more, crank it right up 195. One, two, one, two, three, four. Phew! Right, the chromatic scale. All the notes. Uh, okay, if you'd like to get your exercise sheet out, we'll be looking at um, a topic I've called guide tones. And uh, while you're getting your sheet ready, I'll just uh, explain a little bit about what we're doing. And um, first of all, um, I mean, this is a, a very specific part of playing music. And uh, if it's not something that you're particularly interested in or think is relevant, just carry on playing all the scales and arpeggios on the sheet and, you know, keep a half an ear open for what I'm saying. But um, you can just uh, carry on playing them like any other warm up. But if you're interested in what guide tones are, then listen in. And um, sometimes guide tones are called, I'll jump straight to the uh, nub of it, the thirds and the sevenths of the chord. Now you know that a, a seventh chord has a root, a third, a fifth, and a seventh. And um, as I say, the guide tones are often referred to as the thirds and sevenths. They're not strictly true, but they are probably the most common uh, guide tones. Now, first of all, what's important about the third and the seventh and it's the fact that it, those two notes alone, not the root or the fifth, define the actual chord. This is what's very important about the third and the seventh. So straight away the third will tell you whether it's a major chord or a minor chord. And the seventh will tell you whether it's a dominant seventh or it's not. I'll say it's not because there are lots of other possibilities. 
but it's either dominant seventh or it's a regular major chord with a major seventh. So the third and seventh are really the defining notes. So that's what the, why they're so important to play in a chord. In fact, a lot of piano players, less so guitarists, but a lot of piano players only play the thirds and the sevenths when they're playing a chord because that's all that's required. And you will find often in groups, for example, the bass player is playing the root and the fifth. That's common for them. So we don't need the piano player or the guitarist to also be playing the, the root and the uh, fifth. So another reason why thirds and sevenths are uh, very important. Um, OK, what we're going to do first, I'm gonna, we're going to bring the subject up gradually. We're just going to, first of all, just do a bit of groundwork um, uh, with the chords that we're going to be playing today. So uh, it, this is going to be based on the familiar 2-5-1 chord progression. So we're just going to look at those three chords first of all. The 2 in the key of C is D minor 7. Um, and the 5 in the key of C is G7. And the root, of course, in the key of C is C major 7. And if you're in um, other in, on other tuned instruments, I can, well, I can stick the chords on the screen there. There we go. So these are your two five ones for the different uh, instruments, B flat and E flat instruments, of course. And uh, if you do play a B flat or E flat instrument, you'd probably be aware of the, that two five one uh, situation as well. So I hope make a note of that if um, you're not familiar with that little chord sequence, but. That's the chord sequence we're following today. So let's go back to the exercise sheet. Right, first of all, that two chord. Let's see where it comes from. So first of all, right, we're in the key of C major, but we're going to play from the second note of the scale through the notes of C major up to the octave and back down again. So instead of going from C to C, as we have done in the past, we're going from D up to D and back down again. But still in the key of C major. So you're still playing all the white notes, so to speak, on your concert instruments. And that's the first two bars. So we're going to do the first two bars, first of all. OK, and we're thinking about D minor 7, the, the 2 chord of our 2 five, one. So let's just play what's written on the screen there. I'll get the metronome going. Here we go. First two bars, one, two, one, two, three, four. I'll do that a little bit slower, because it's not one we've actually played before. So, one, two, one and two and three and four and so it's clearly a minor scale minor sound let's do that again one two three four And the only reason I say it's minor is because one, two, three, the third note is a minor third interval. And that's really what defines it as being a minor scale. Anyway, we're still in the key of C major, so that's the important thing. We just started on the D, so right, we're still playing in C major. Now, on to the next two uh, bars. And what I've done there is shown not all the eight notes, but the first, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of that scale that we have just played. And what this does is outlines the chord of D minor seven. So by starting on the D and playing the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, and then coming down in the last bar, uh, you are playing a D minor seven arpeggio, the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the octave, and down again. So let's play the next two bars. Okay, so we're playing bar three and four on the top line. One, two, three, four. Just notice the uh, waves on the way down. Here we go. Do that again. 
two, three, four. So that's root, third, fifth, seventh. One more time. One, oops, no. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've now got a D minor 7 under our fingers based on the um, playing C major from D to D and picking out the 1st, the 3rd, the 5th and the 7th notes. Let's do the same thing now with the 5 chords. So we're now going to play the C major scale but starting on the G. Okay, so we're on to the second line, first two bars. And this is playing C major scale, concert C major, hopefully... E flats and A flats can translate okay. Uh, C major scale from G to G. One, two, three, four. And again. One, two, three, four. time. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we just played the C major scale from G to G. Let's pick out the first, the third and the fifth and the seventh of that particular run of notes and that will give us a G7 arpeggio. So we're on the bars three and four now of the second line, the G7 uh, or A7 or uh, E7 for the E flat, B flats and E flats. Here we go. So third and fourth bar, second line after four. One, two, three, four. Root third, fifth, seventh. Oops, sorry, I didn't come down <laughs> like it's written. Let's do that again. And one, two, three, four. Yeah. This time you can hear and you can see it's a major chord because the root to the third is a major interval. It's also got a flattened seventh. Yeah, that concert F near the end there. Fourth note. So, in all these examples, think about the third and the seventh in particular. So, we've got that major third. Oops. And we've got the uh, flattened seventh. Right, let's just do that one more time. The G7 arpeggio. Third and fourth part. One, two, oops. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got the so far the two chord and the five chord of our two five one chord progression sorted out. Let's move on to the third line and we've got the C major scale itself. And it, it's last in the queue, really, last in the chord progression, because it's where the, the, this particular chord sequence resolves. It resolves down to the, uh, the tonic, the uh, main key center. Okay, so on the third line, let's just play that first two bars. So it's just really the concert C major scale. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Time two, three, four. Good, and the same pattern now. Um, 
you'll see we're going to take the, from that scale we're going to take the first the third the fifth and the seventh and that will give us the arpeggio for c major seventh and that's the third and fourth bar of the third line so let's do that so on the third and fourth bar one two three four so root third fifth seventh examples on the third bar the um, the third is on the second note because it's root third and again you can hear it's a major interval and the seventh oops, is a major seventh because it's a semitone below the, the next octave which is why it's a C major seventh when you're playing diatonically which really just means when you're playing all notes in the key. Good. So we've got our two five one. Let's just go back and identify the thirds and the sevenths of those. So we're going to go back to the top line third bar. And I'd just like you to play top line third bar, the second note, and that's the third <laughs> third of the scale, third of the chord, and that's the second note on the the bar. So you should hit. You should get that note. So on the top line, third bar, second note along, you should be hearing that, and that's the third. So I'll make a mental note of that or put a circle around it. And then the last note of that bar is the seventh. Third, seventh, third, seventh. Right, let's go down to the next line, second line. Let's identify the thirds and sevenths there. Okay, so the third is the second note along. And the seventh. when you jump from the third to the seventh you get this tritone interval which is a very unstable sounding interval needs to be resolved yeah I don't want to hear that for too long um, that's why the G7 chord needs to be resolved because of that tritone between the third and the seventh and then we go on to the last chord the major seventh, the third, so play the third, you should be hearing that sound, and the four, uh, seventh, and because it's a major seventh you're not getting that tritone interval, so it doesn't need resolving, how about that eh? Right. Now this can take a year's worth of study, so don't worry about remembering all this. And uh, it's really just we're just playing our way through it and getting an idea for these so-called guide tones. So guide tones in this example are essentially the thirds and the sevenths and how they move through those chords and create. They help to f help to move the chord progression, the harmony, from one chord to the next. We'll go through little examples next of how that works. And you hear this sort of thing all the time. Um, somebody in a workshop might say, play backings over these chords. If you play the sevenths and the thirds, if you change from seventh to third to seventh to third, you'll find yourself coming down in semitones or tones, small intervals. And you get this kind of smooth um, line through the chords and it helps the chord progression move along. You hit, um, 
you'll hear it in big band arrangements, you'll hear it in orchestral arrangements, you'll hear it in... Next time you listen to a bit of music on a television programme and you hear those strings coming down chromatically, they're often playing guide tones in the chords behind the melody um, in order to kind of almost like to join those um, chords together and help the harmony move. And you'll also hear guitarists and piano players playing these thirds and sevenths as small voicings um, in there, uh, rather than playing big, huge, chunky chords, they just play the third and the seventh, and it helps in the same way musically as the other examples. Okay, let's move on to the last uh, penultimate line now. And, um, oh no, there's three lines to go, all right. <laughs> um, so the third of the two. We're just gonna play the third of the second chord followed by the seventh of the fifth chord, the five chord, followed by the <laughs> the um, third note, we're talking about intervals here, of the first. If in doubt, just play those um, notes that are written on the screen and get used to the sound. So we're playing the, that first note, let's just play that first note first of all. Oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong note there. How about that? <laughs> That's right, concert F. And the, that is the third of the D minor chord. Dum, dum. So if you play that note there, it should sound like the third of that chord I'm playing. Yeah. On to the second note of that stave. It's the same note. That's because the seventh of the five chord is the same note. And then go down a semitone, and you're back on the third of the first chord, or the one chord. So in time, I just want you to play those three notes, those two bars, just those three notes. So one, two, three, four. You should hear yourself playing a harmony in a sense, but these are the guide tones. These are guide tones. You're guiding your way through those chords. And guide tones are always small movements between, or no movement at all. Here we go, let's do that again. One, two, three, four. Yeah, sounds nice, doesn't it? I hope, I can't hear you. <laughs> um, one more time, one, two, three, four. So that's the third, that's the seventh of that chord, and that's the third of that one. Now that was a th what I call a three, seven, three guide tone movement in my language. Uh, we're now gonna do the other way around, a seven, three, seven. They tend to alternate because then they're very close together in terms of the scale. So I'm going to play the same 2-5-1, that's what I'm doing, playing the, the D minor G7C. We're on to the next two, bar, next two bars of that line. So you're now going to play the 7th, then the 3rd, then the 7th of those chords. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, 1, 2, 3, 4. One more time, one, two, three, four. Good, they do sound nice, I do hope. <laughs> um, what I've done on the next line down is just put those two together. Now, if you're blowing an instrument, you won't be able to play those two at the same time. But um, piano players and guitarists, you can play these little mini chords, thirds and sevenths. Um, so let's just do one of those. And if you're playing p piano or guitar, see if you can play those little pairs of notes. Dyads, as they're called, as opposed to triads with three notes. So, but uh, horn players, you can still just play one note. Just choose one. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
One more time. Two, three, four. There we go. Now I've just taken those individual notes on in those dyads and separated them into a little melody. And that's the next two bars. And interestingly, what I've done here, I've just made sure that it's the seventh that changes to the third when it goes from one chord to the next. And that's the best way to arrange this. If you are really into detailed arrangements of these things, and people do get it into their playing sometimes, eventually, is to end a chord playing the seventh and move it to the third of the next chord. And that's where you get the sweetest little change of melody over a chord progression. Uh, so this is an example of that. So a melodic combination of the line. <laughs> um, so just play what's written and then you'll hear it. Hopefully, I'm just going to play the same chords. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so what you're playing are the, is th third, seventh, third, seventh, third, seventh of the three chords. One, two, three, four. Third, seventh, third, seventh, third, seventh. How about that? One more time. One, two, three, four. Good. Just a couple more examples now before we finish on guide tones or this aspect of guide tones. Uh, so on to the bottom line now, melodic phrases using guide tones. And here, um, just a couple of examples. Uh, the first one is really just going up the arpeggio of the first chord. That's the first four notes. Notice that's the seventh of the D minor. Down a semitone to the third of the next chord. Seventh, third of the last chord. So, okay, last line, just play those uh, first two bars. One, two, three, four. Do, 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 do. Yep. One, two, three, four. Do, So in all these examples, it's the seventh that you're playing at the end of the chord, leading to the third in the, the next chord. And that creates this extra strong harmonic movement, which the chord alone does have in it, but it's not quite so pronounced. One more time on that uh, first one. One, two, three, four. There we go. Just on to the last one now. It's just a little bit, it's the same notes really, just ran in a different order, but I've still made sure that the seventh and the third lead from one to the other in the chord changes. So you'll notice that it's the same notes during the chord change, but the other notes are turned around a bit. The last two bars, one, two, three, four. And again, one, Two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. There we go. And in future weeks, we will come back to this at, in other keys and uh, see what the guide turns. So if it didn't all make sense today uh, it all gradually makes sense in the future but uh, anyway that's a little introduction there to guide tones let's just finish off today with our strumming and um okay i'm going to play those chords at the top which are the same chords we've just been playing and uh, you can practice your guide tones practice your thirds and sevenths or just noodle about in the key c major d major a major or play the arpeggios. You know the score. Play what you like. Here we go, just for a minute, just finishing off. 
one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, try singing them, that's a good idea. I just tried. <laughs> yes, I am playing one bar per chord, so let's just stretch them out. Let's do that one more time. One, two, three, four. Finish on the tonic. Okie dokie. Good. Right, I hope that's got you going, warmed up and everything else for the weekend ahead. <laughs> um, right, okay everybody, that's it for uh, number 99. I hope you can come next week. Um, it will be a little bit different next week, so uh, do come along to the 100th episode of the Friday Morning Warm-Up. And if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can all say goodbye to each other and to me. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. And, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.